So this is where you will be developing your film. So once you have your film inside of the tank, make sure that you get a piece of masking tape and write your name on it. Make sure that the tape is on the tank itself. This will allow you to know which tank is yours and which one is your classmates. Because if there's no label, all the tanks look the same. And each student will be at a different state of developing their film, so you don't want to accidentally put in the wrong chemical. So on the back of all the chemicals, we have a chart that goes through each step for developing. So when you're ready to develop your film, you'll just follow step by step and do exactly what the chart tells you. It tells you how long each chemical stays in the tank. It also tells you what to do with the tank, such as agitating or letting it sit. It also tells you how much of each chemical to put into the tank. Directly next to the chart, we have an additional chart for developing times. Uh, from time to time, you might have a different type of film, especially if you continue on to photo two, three, and AP Studio Art. So that is a good location to go and see what your developing time is. When you're developing film, you're working with a lot of different chemicals. So because of that, we have different safety rules in the darkroom. Our main rule is you are not allowed to eat or drink in the photo room. This includes the classroom space, the area around developing film, and in the darkroom. Additionally, you have to make sure that you wash your hands with soap and water after handling any and all chemicals. This prevents you from accidentally ingesting it. Many of the chemicals can stay in clothes, so be very careful. The developer will stain your clothes brown, and the fixer acts like a bleach and will bleach your clothes. Neither one of the, these will come out of your clothing. If you happen to see that there's a problem with the chemicals or you see something is wrong, please let your teacher know immediately. Also, alert your teacher right away if you pour the wrong chemical in the large tub or into your tank. Make sure you keep the developing area clean. Put away all of your equipment after you've washed and dried them right when you're done. And lastly, safety first. So when pouring each chemical into the tank, you're going to be using one of these measuring cups. We have about five or six measuring cups located in the sink area. Before you put any chemical into the measuring cup, you have to make sure that it is clean. So give it a good rinse with water to make sure that any residue from a previous chemical is washed out. So I've already done that, and I'm gonna to go to the very first chemical, which is the developer. So our developer is in this short brown tank. It's labeled Dove for developer. So according to the chart, I'm going to put 300 milliliters of developer into the tank for one roll of film. So on my measuring cup, I'm going to find 300. And at the bottom, we have a spigot. We pull the handle up, the chemical goes in. And then at 300 milliliters, I stop it. And this will give me just the right amount of developer to cover my roll of film. So I'm going to open up the lid. I'm going to make sure that my funnel is locked. Always make sure that your funnel is locked. I'm going to take the chemical and I'm going to carefully and very slowly pour it in. And once all the developer is in, I'm going to go ahead and put the label or the lid back on. Make sure it's tight. And then I'm going to start my timer. For the developer, the time is located next to the developing chart. Uh, for this type of film that Photo One uses primarily, it is four minutes. So my timer is set to four minutes. I start it and then I agitate. So agitation is this up and down flipping of the tank. Agitation. This is shaking. We do not shake the film. We agitate the film. By flipping the tank upside down and back upright, you're allowing the chemical to filter through both sides of the negative. 
is in the real, there is a gap in between. So you agitate for 30 seconds, and then you let it sit for 30 seconds. Agitate for 30, let it sit for 30. And you continue doing that for the full four minutes. If you see that the tank is leaking a little bit, as this one is, you can take some paper towels, wrap it around the top, and that will help prevent spillage. Make sure when you're agitating, you're agitating over the carpet between the sinks or directly over the sink. Do not bring chemicals to the tables. Always make sure you're by the sink area. So agitate for 30, let it sit for 30. Once you are done and the timer has gone off, you'll be able to pour the chemical back in. So when you open up the tank, you wanna carefully open the lid away from you and away from your neighbors, just in case any of the chemical wants to spill out. Sometimes gases build up as you're agitating, so they might burst out. So you open it away from you, away from your classmates. Make sure that the funnel is still locked in place. From time to time, the funnel loosens while you agitate. So make sure it's locked. And then the developer gets poured back into the developing tank. Now when I'm pouring it in, I'm holding the funnel and the tank just in case. The last thing you want is for the funnel to fall out because then your film will fall out and it will all end up inside the tank exposed to light. And then there's a lot of panic with that. So make sure that you always check the funnel and hold the funnel when you're pouring the chemical back in. Once you're done pouring the developer in, you're going to add replenisher. So replenisher is in this large tub, a labeled replenisher. For each roll of film you develop, you're going to pour one capful into the developer, just like that, and you put the cap back on. Once you've added the replenisher, it is very important that you put the lid back on top of the developer tank. This will prevent the developer from being exposed to too much light. It also helps keep it fresh and from evaporating. Um, developer is very similar to the developer in the darkroom as in what it does. This developer makes the image appear on your film. It dissolves some of the crystals on the film, causes the picture to show up. So this is a very important step. This is what makes your pictures come alive, essentially. Once you're done with the developer, you're going to come to the sink and do a water rinse. So in order to do that, you need water from the sink. And you're going to pour the water into the tank. And once it fills up, you pour it back out. You're going to do this about three times. Fill up the tank with water, dump it, fill it with water, dump it. This allows the developer to be washed off of your film and prevents cross-contamination with the next chemical. One important thing to note about water is you want to make sure that you use cold water. Always use cold water when you're doing your water rinses. The film is made out of plastic, so if you use hot water, the plastic could warp, melt, get a little weird, bad things can happen. So always make sure you use cold water for your water rinses. Our next step is the fixer. So the fixer is located in this large tub labeled fix. Um, once again, you're going to use a measuring cup that has been cleaned before, and you're going to fill it with 300 milliliters for one roll of film. When you reach the 300 milliliters, you'll go ahead and carefully pour the fixer into your tank. Put the lid on top. And once again, you're going to agitate for 30, let it sit for 30. 
agitate for 30 seconds, let it sit. The fixer is in your tank for eight minutes. Eight minutes for the fixer. It's standard for every roll of film that we use here. So make sure your timer is set for eight minutes. Eight minutes for the fixer. Uh, the purpose of the fixer is the same as a fixer in the dark room. It helps keep your image permanent. It also prevents your film from being sensitive to light. So once you go through the fixer stage, if your film were to fall out accidentally, it's okay. Light will no longer affect it. Um, after the eight minutes are up, once again, you want to carefully open the lid away from you, check your funnel, and then pour the fixer back into the tub, and then close the lid. After the fixer, you are going to do another round of water rinses. So using cold water, you fill the tank and then dump the water out. Fill and dump. You're going to do this three times to ensure that all of the fixer residue has been washed off to prevent cross-contamination. Our next chemical is HypoClear. This is the jug labeled Hypo. Once again, clean measuring cup, 300 milliliters. And you're going to carefully pour the Hypo into the tank. This time, you're going to agitate the tank for two minutes two whole minutes, constant agitation. Back and forth for two minutes. The HypoClear helps clean the negative from the fixer. It allows all that chemical residue to come off. So two minutes, constant agitation. After the two minutes, You'll go ahead and once again carefully take the lid off, check your funnel, make sure it's locked, and then you'll pull the hypo back in and always make sure you put the lid back on top of our chemical tanks. our final water rinse. This one is a little bit longer. It is five minutes. You want to constantly be running water through your film and tank. So the easiest way to do it is to just take your tank, place it underneath the sink, and using cold water, just let the water run. And as the water fills the tank, it will slowly fill and escape, and then replenish as it fills up. So you'll just let the water run for five minutes. Make sure you're using cold water. So after the five minute water rinse is done, I'm going to dump all the water out and use my very last chemical. So we have PhotoFlow. So the PhotoFlow comes in this small bottle. Sometimes you'll see a bottle like this. Other times we might have a different brand that's labeled Kodak but all the same. There is a hole poked in the very top of the bottle. So you'll just put about five to 10 drops of PhotoFlow into the tank, and then you fill it with water. As you fill it with water, you'll see bubbles start to form. The PhotoFlow is a detergent. It once again helps clean the negatives from all the chemical residue. But in addition to that, it also helps get rid of watermarks. So once you fill up the tank with water and PhotoFlow, you're gonna agitate for 30 seconds. This allows the PhotoFlow to really circulate around all of the surfaces of the film, coat them well, and clean them. 
After 30 seconds, you'll open your lid. You'll hopefully see lots of bubbles. And all of this gets poured down the drain. This is the only chemical that goes down the drain. Every other chemical we recycle. So from here, you'll be able to open up your tank and move on to drying your film and taking it out. So after you've dumped the photo flow, you'll be able to take your film out. The film will be very foamy and bubbly from the photo flow. Do not rinse it. If you rinse your film, you will once again have watermarks on it, which defeats the purpose of using the photo flow. Okay. So you'll take the film out, you'll take the part out, and then you'll carefully take your film off the reel, and hopefully, if all goes as planned, you will have beautiful negatives. Now, to get rid of all of the bubbles, you're going to squeegee the film. So I'm going to take my pointer finger, middle finger, I'm going to put the film in between the two. I'm just going to run my fingers from the top to bottom of the film. And I do this either over the sink or over the rug to prevent water from being on the floor. So this is our film dryer. You're going to take your film once you've squeegeed it. You're going to open the door and inside we have pretty much a very warm cabinet. At the very top, we have clips, and this is where you're going to clip your film to. So I'm going to go from the back and work my way to the front. Okay, always put your film at the back of the cabinet and then work forward. This will allow other students to easily hang their film. If you make a curtain of film in the front, it's going to be very hard to get around. Um, I went ahead and I peeled my name tag off of my tank and I'm going to place that on top of the clip that my film is hanging on. Sometimes we might have film that's very similar to other students, especially for one of our first shooting assignments. We're all shooting basically in the same location. This allows you to easily identify that that is your film. So as the film dries, it's going to want to curl. So to prevent curls, at the bottom of the dryer we have a box of clips. You'll take a clip, then you'll just clip it to the bottom. That allows the film to stay straight and have some weight on it to prevent it from curling. As soon as your film is in, you're going to go ahead and close the door and then make sure you lock it. If the door is open, then dust can get in and that can get on your film, creating uh, dirt. If the dryer is turned off, as it is now, the best way to turn it on is to turn the dial on the left-hand side to about 20 minutes. When you do that, the dryer turns on and stays on for 20 minutes. It acts as a timer. Your film should be dry in about 10 minutes. So once 10 minutes is up, you can go ahead and open the dryer, and then kind of run your fingers on both sides of the film. If you feel that the film is sticky, your fingers are sticking to it, that means it is still wet. If your fingers run past without any um, stickiness, then your film is nice and dry, and you can go ahead and take it out. So the bottom clip goes back in the box on the bottom. And then make sure that you take your name sticker off so that way the next student has a clean clip to hang their magnets on. So the final step of developing your film is cleaning up all of your equipment. So you want to make sure that you rinse all the pieces of equipment thoroughly to get rid of these rid of any photo flow and other chemical residue. And then using a paper towel, just give it a quick dry. 
so that the next block has dry equipment to work with. If you need more than one paper towel, use it. And when everything is clean, you're going to take all of your equipment, when it's dry, and you're going to put it back into all of the right places. So the lid, these are the lids. 